Welcome to the Parasite Podcast, a show about me and you. We are Venom. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Parasite Podcast. And this is my first ever live Parasite Podcast. And this is uh, with my friend John. John, say hello to everybody. Hi everybody, my Hi. name is John. They've never seen me and Batman at the same place at the same time. That's all I can say. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Exclusive, right? Uh, we just found out John is Batman. What? I didn't say that. Oh, he didn't say that. Um, John is actually a friend of mine. Uh, when I moved here to Orlando and I was uh, trying to make new friends, I managed to make one at work when I worked at Lego for, unfortunately, the short time that I worked there. I wish I could have stayed longer. Me too. Um, and, uh, but one of the people I met was John. He was super nice. Turns out he was a fellow YouTuber. Yes. And uh, also he has a channel where he talks a lot about tech stuff. So real quick before we get into this, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about your channel and uh, where they can find it. And by the way, I will put a link down below to all of John's stuff. So on YouTube and Instagram and stuff, I go by Riddle John. It's a name that was given to me and it just stuck throughout the years. It's a play on words on Little John. Right. The Robin Hood character. I was wondering. Not the rapper. Okay. So yeah. Sorry. It's um, not L-I-L. No, it's not. Right. It's actually Little John, but instead of Little, it's Riddle. Okay. Because when I was younger, I would do a lot of Riddlers, Riddles, and the Riddler was one of my favorite characters. Okay. So they just gave me Riddle John, and it stuck, and that's what I am on social media. And yeah, so like Zeke said, I'm a tech YouTuber. I go, um, I mostly do reviews on like tech, cameras, things like that, microphones, um, the video the last video i've uploaded was about a vintage lens i found and yeah. how shooting on vintage lenses are really cool so if you're into all that kind of techie stuff i'm your man i will totally teach you everything you need to know about setting up your youtube and i help zeke all the time with setting up <laughs> yeah. his stuff yeah he does if, if you <laughs> if you noticed any quality improvement over the past few months uh, John has been definitely a part of that, and so is my friend Andrew, who lived in California. Yes. And he would always, he's like, he was like my you in California. <laughs> he's like, he would, he'll like, hey. doesn't matter where you go, there's no. always one of yeah. us. <laughs> he'll like, he'll, he'll text me, like, hey, how you doing? I'm like, good. He goes, cool. Hey, so here's a new camera you should check out. I'm like, oh man. Um, so yeah, you guys know me. I'm afraid of tech. It scares me. I'm like a, a cross between a boomer and whatever you would call a 10 year old right now. Um, a 10 year old who's used to using things but right. doesn't know how any of it works. Um, that's kind of how I am. And so whenever someone recommends a new piece of tech, I go, uh, but um, John actually brought me over. So I have a capture card that my friend uh, Joe gave me a while back. A little too complicated for me. I used yeah. it a couple times and I've got to be honest with you, I, I'm not a big fan of figuring it out even further. John showed up, got me a new capture card so uh, to help me with some streams coming up. Yeah. Also gave me an idea that I didn't even know was possible. I know, right? Which is dumb. T tell them the uh, the idea you had that I'm too dumb to figure out on my own. You're not dumb. Did it's just yes, I am. No, you're not. It's just <laughs> it's not something commonly used. So uh -huh. like most people don't know. Like to find it, you would have to do deep research. So um, the capture card I gave Z, instead of having it hooked up to your computer, then your TV, you would just straight up hook it up all to your computer. So that way you can use your webcam. And you could black out your face on scenes that you needed to black out your face or like show your face when you wanted to. And that way you could be, you wouldn't have to bring in your TV into your studio and not have to worry about constantly moving things back and forth. That's exactly my problem is that I'm always trying to get my TV and my computer right next to each other so I can hook everything up. And it's yeah. not always easy to have that set up, like you said. It's not. Um, I've tried it in the past and it just almost never works. Right. So it's easier to just do everything on one system and then do everything else on a different system. Right. So he was like, yeah, you can just hook your PlayStation to your monitor, your computer monitor. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that was very interesting. Like the, I could see it in his eyes when the light bulb went off. Right. And I'm like... Like, oh, he, he just learned this. He's, he's, never, he's never thought of that. Okay, let, let's ease into this. Right. Um, baby steps. Baby, baby steps, steps, yeah. <laughs> so um, so John's been really great. And uh, and so when he was like, hey, I'd like to collaborate with you on something, I was like, well, you know, I was trying to come up with some ideas, but then I was like, you know what, maybe I'm overthinking it. I'll just wing it. And then we got here today, and I still couldn't even wing it. <laughs> but then he, you know, he was nice enough to interview me on his channel. So make yes. sure, obviously, make sure you go subscribe. Many of you have seen him in the comment section on the live streams, chatting with us. Um, and like I said, he worked with me at Lego, and I'm glad we're finally getting to do this. Same. And um, and it won't be the last. And time. it will not be the last time. That's true. Even if I have to show up at your house. Yeah, now he knows where keep I live. These labs going. <laughs> He's one of four people that knows where I live, and I will keep it that way. Yeah. Uh, if there's a fifth person, I have to kill one of you. 
Um, so just so you know, there can only be four horsemen. I'm just saying, <laughs> seniority means nothing nowadays. Go with the oldest person you have. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm just going to put you all in a room together and throw a knife on the ground and go, use the knife, like Rafi style. Right. Yeah. Um, but uh, but so I was like, well, you know what? I haven't done a Parasite podcast in a while. And since you were nice enough to interview me, I thought, why not return the favor and let's do an in-person Parasite podcast, which I've yes. never done, and uh, and I'd want to do more of, but I also want to do more StreamYard uh, ones at some point, too. Yeah, definitely. So now this being a Parasite podcast episode, these kind of structured to where I get to interview people and just more organically just talk to them about their passions and stuff. So gotcha. first, let me ask, what got you into tech in general? Like, what is... What is it about uh, just cameras? And like, I really love that video you made about old lenses. Like, I learned a lot in that video, and <laughs> I, I, I certainly respect older things, uh, you know, in, uh, in that regard. But to see someone break it down the way you did, I really enjoyed. So, what, before we get into why you make your YouTube channel, what in general about tech, you know, gets you? All right. So, pretty much what gets me into tech was since little, I've always had a knack for technology. Okay. Um, not just my parents, but like, my siblings and stuff would always come to me whenever something wasn't working right or mm -hmm. anything. And I remember one year, I, this is going to tell you how old I am real quick. One year, um, our I VCR, <laughs> older, our VCR <laughs> stopped working. Oh. VCR. Whoa. Stopped working. And I like, remember, um, my dad was getting ready to throw it out, but I was like, but I have all these movies that I want to watch. So I took it apart. Clean the whole inside of it, mm -hmm. memorize as I was saying in part, memorize everything and had to do everything backwards when I put it back together and bam, started working again. It was just dirty. But like I remember that experience mm -hmm. and then after that I just like tech just came natural to me. So I've always like liked tech and navigated towards tech. And yeah, it's pretty much a passion of mine, besides like all the nerd stuff, obviously, because I'm also into comics and things like that. Right. Um, so a funny story is my channel, if you go back, not all my videos are about tech. My original videos mm -hmm. were about nerdy stuff. Like I did unboxings for Funko Pop. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, I did a like most wanted list of like Funko Pops that I wanted. Okay. Like it was a whole bunch of nerdy stuff and I still have those videos cause that's my past and I can't really let it go. Sure. But like, you'll see like midway through, there's a transition where I go from nerd to tech person and okay. then that's where... I started gaining subscribers and all that stuff. Okay. Um, yeah, I noticed that too. A lot of times people set out to make one thing with their channel, mm -hmm. and then it goes naturally a different way. Yeah. Like I also, I started the channel by doing toy reviews and unboxing um, uh, loot crates. Yeah. And uh, and that went away pretty quickly because like, uh, <laughs> that got expensive. Yeah, it um, did. Yeah. And, uh, and so tech, like you say, I uh, like that, you're like, I used to do nerdy things. I'm like, well, tech's still kind of nerdy. Yeah. Uh, but it's like a, it's a different kind of nerdy, yeah. obviously. Um, but what is a, what is a piece of technology that you've come across that you've really liked and that you think has helped your channel? And what piece of technology would you hope to get one day that you think would help not maybe just your channel, but just your love for the stuff? All right. So for that, I would say my camera. Okay. So when I first started my YouTube, mm -hmm. I used my phone. And I've always had iPhone and stuff, so I use that. <laughs> <laughs> I still use yeah, my phone. <laughs> which, there's nothing wrong. The quality of cell phone video, He's amazing nowadays. No. Now I know. <laughs> yeah. But I noticed a huge, like, jump when I switched from using my iPhone to actually holding a DSLR camera in my hands and, like, learning about the lenses, switching out lenses, getting different views. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Speaking of which, I learned so much because not when you're on your phone, everything's done automatically for you. When you switch over to a camera, you have to set the exposure correctly. Yeah. You have to manually set the focus and all these other things. So it changes the game completely. Right. So I understand why tech is scary for most people. <laughs> yeah. It's not an easy thing to learn. But once you master it, it's like, oh my God, this was so simple. But yeah, so I would say that. And then honestly, just... um. I would, I'm the kind of person where if your videos look good enough, mm -hmm. you're good. But audio is very important for me. So I would like love to upgrade my audio system one day to have like a really good microphone where I sound like perfect. Okay. No like pitching in the background, no weird noises, just sure. perfect audio. Because I believe once you have really, like you could have 720 video, mm -hmm. but sound amazing. Right. And people will watch your stuff. True. 
It's true. I mean, that stuff does make a difference. Uh, there are like people like me, like I'm the kind of YouTuber that I don't really care what people's background is or what, what you know, what their lighting situation is. Yeah. If the content is interesting, I'm there. Um, or if the discussion are having, I'm there. But there, I would say majority of people who tune into to uh, YouTube have a, a eye for that stuff and an ear for that stuff. Yeah. I, I'm not one of those people, but I know most people do because I get those comments sometimes. We're like, oh, you know, like, you know, if you had this or, you know, you did this this way, like that might help out with yeah. stuff. And it's true. All those things are, are good advice. Um, here in the apartment, you'll never get clean audio no matter how many pads I put around because Echo is always right next to us chewing on things. <laughs> he just looked at us. Yeah. Um, but this episode, you might notice a, a improvement in audio because you were nice enough to hook up a, 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 can, a, a actual a, a microphone to my camera and to my phone. Yeah. So thank you for doing that. You're welcome, sir. Yeah. But I mean, for the most part, your audio sounds really good. Yeah, you get the echo every now and then, but yeah. like, it, you have a dog. There's nothing you can do. What I'm talking about when it comes to some YouTubers is like, they sound like straight up Bane from Batman. Not yeah. even the good Bane. Yeah. The, um, yeah. Tom, not Tom Holland. What's his name? Tom Hardy? Tom Hardy version of Bane. You can't so, forget Tom Hardy's name on the I, Parasite I know, podcast. I I've messed up He's already. <laughs> I messed up already. But yeah, what I mean is like, you'll get Tom Hardy. So like, they'll be like, hello and welcome to my channel. Right. Like, I can do that for like two, three minutes. But after that, I'm just like, I can't watch this video anymore. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's funny because we were talking about on your your show when you had me on about what things that like irk us on yeah. YouTube. For me, it's it's none of that. Like if someone if someone's barely audible, I, I can't only hear out of one ear anyway. Okay. Actually, I just realized I probably should have sat on that side, <laughs> uh, but that's okay. It's a it's a pretty enclosed room. Yeah. Um. But uh. But I hate when I'm watching someone do like a four minute trailer reaction and they're eating. Yes. Or they're drinking. I'm like, you can't no. wait four minutes. Right. Like, come on. That's so. I see it as a, a standard and unprofessional thing. To them, they're just like, hey, man, my job is to watch YouTube videos. I don't need to, you know, and that's fine. Like, we all sure. have our different perspectives. Um, but to me, that's the kind of thing that irks me. But I can imagine someone who's, like, tech uh, knowledgeable, like my friend Andrew. I feel bad because Andrew's such a nice guy, but I'm sure some of my videos, he's like, click. Because he's probably <laughs> like, I made a suggestion six months ago, and he's still not doing it. Um, and that is the, probably the most frustrating thing about being my friend and being a tech <laughs> person. So... I'll have to put you and Andrew in contact with each other so that way he can prepare you for some of the battles you're about to fight <laughs> of being my friend. Um, so, okay, Andrew, we got this. Two to one? <laughs> yeah, what? You, you guys outnumber me now. <laughs> right? Both coasts now. Right? Um, so now that we've, you know, we talked a little bit about your, like, just love in general for tech. Mm -hmm. um, what, when, when did you start noticing the shift on your channel? Like, was it, do you think it was a natural thing or was it like you were doing it and then like a month later you're like, Holy crap! I'm my quality's gone up, and I didn't even realize I was doing it. Like, was it that kind of transition? So, um, being a tech YouTube, you always want the the newest and greatest, <laughs> but not necessarily the newest. You just always you're always on that constant. I will need to upgrade. Like, what you have is good, but you know there's always like that tiny bit in you that right. can always be better. Right. You know this as a writer. Yeah. Like, you can write an amazing novel and you're like man this novel is like 90 percent good there's always that three percent or more i always write a novel and go it's a hundred percent bad let's do it again but you, no but you know there's like good in it right and then there's sure. always things that could be better where right. you're like man if i had just wrote this sentence or if i had just put this word here sure like as a tech youtuber that's the thing where i'm always like this is good, but it can always be better. Right. <laughs> like um, the one good. good scene in Wonder Woman, life is good, but it can be better. Oh, that meme with yeah, yeah. um, with uh, Maxwell Lord. Yes. Yeah, that's a. Uh, it's yeah. funny that you say that too, because I think you say that as like, oh, I'm a tech YouTuber, and I and I almost there's that part of you that just naturally wants to do that. But it's funny because I've seen some tech YouTubers that don't have that. So I would say you have a that tech YouTuber, uh, YouTuber mentality, but you also, I think, just have a good work ethic. Like, uh, like I think um, that's one thing I notice a lot on YouTube is that some people, they're only able to just pop on their webcam and it's not good quality and they don't have lights. You know, everyone's yeah. got to start somewhere yeah. and you got to learn things. Not everyone knows how to make productions when they start doing things. Even me who worked in production, my early videos, I'm embarrassed by them. I'm like, wow, high ceilings and you hear my you know voice yeah. traveling. Like there's all, you got to put padding up. Like there's all these things you got to learn. Um, even if you already knew it, uh, but uh, but I think we're having a good work ethic is really key 
to maintaining a YouTube channel. Yes. Because it, it is hard work. And it's it and it is a second job. Like if you like I watch some of your videos, I'm like, this like me, I can fart a video out in a day. I can sit there and like I can read I'll spend like two hours reading a comic book. And then, not one comic, but like a whole graphic novel, yeah. maybe. Uh, I'm not that slow. Um, <laughs> but then I'll record the video where I just, unscripted, just say my thoughts on it. And then I'll probably spend like two hours editing it. And then I post it. So within like one day, I can maybe get one video up. But that, but when I watch your stuff, I'm just like, God, no way could I do any of, even if it's just conversational things you're having or talking about lenses, I'm like, he probably shot that in one day, but I don't know how much time he had to do doing uh -huh. all the other stuff. It, like, so I usually try to shoot things in one day, mm -hmm. but like my one day of shooting will go anywhere from like an hour to two hours of shooting. Okay. So like I'll repeat things multiple times or like there's cuts where like I don't show people this, but then I'll say something and be like, wait, is that right? And then I'll go to my phone and then you'll see me for like 10 minutes, like reading on my phone. And then I'm like, remember to cut this out, John. And then I'll keep <laughs> reading. Yeah. So like, um, I'll shoot everything in one day yeah. and then the editing process can take me anywhere from two to three, two from a day to two. So that's a like three days already right. of, for one video. <laughs> right. So like right now we're recording this, this will probably go up before my video even goes up. Probably. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that's the cost you pay when you, but your video is going to look and sound like amazing <laughs> and it's going to be, it's going to, it's going to be great. And, uh, but that's the thing is like you, you have that work ethic where you, you fine tune everything yeah. for me. Like I, I'm definitely, um, um, I, I want to have some quality. Like mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not obsessed with the best quality, yeah. I, but I want to have some, I want people to enjoy what they're seeing. But my thing is content. Like I'm like, I, like I want to pump out stuff yeah. constantly. Um, because I, it just keeps my mind busy. Yeah. Like, uh, you know me on a personal level and you know some of the stuff I post about on social media and stuff. And it's yeah. like, I want escape from those feelings sometimes. I guess. And, and pumping stuff out all the time is... So that's one thing someone taught me about writing too. They're like, like right now I'm working on King of Neverland. You see all the Peter Pan books over yeah. there stacked up. Um, I'm rewriting up chunks of it again for like the hundredth time. <laughs> and uh, there it is a point that you have to get to, which I'm finally at, which is you got to move on. Like you, you just got to, at the end of the day, you just got to say, we're done. This is what's going to come out for better or worse. And I got to move on to the next thing. Yeah. And that's kind of where I finally got to a Neverland. Uh, uh, but, uh, but sometimes my videos, like I was there a while in the beginning with Venom Vlog. I was like cooking and doing weight loss stuff mixed in with Venom Vlog. And it was a lot of production yeah. for a video. And I was just like, people just want to hear me talk about Venom. <laughs> so I slowly just started editing that stuff out. Which is fine. Like, sure. um, I saw this thing on social media the other day where it's like, look at the Simpsons. Uh -huh. Now, look at how they started where the animation and the storyline. Very stuff, crude looking. Yeah, yeah, very bad. Now, look at where they are today. Sure. They didn't get from where they were to where they're at overnight. Sure. And 23 seasons or yeah. something. Yeah. No, but like the thing was either you're going to spend your whole life trying to make one thing perfect. Right. Or you're just going to make one thing and make it perfect as you go on. Right. So that's how you got to start. That's how I see most things. And when he said it, I was like, oh, my God, that's how that clicks so good with me. Because, yeah, they look crappy now then, but now they look better. Sure. But imagine you can either have a show that started crappy and now looks amazing. Right. Or a show that looks amazing and never existed. True. I mean, that's one thing I said in your video, too, which is a quote I've heard for the past 10 years now, which yeah. is, never stop being a student. Yes. You know, like, uh, if, as long as you have that mentality, one, I think it pretty, it keeps you pretty humble. Yeah. It also, I think, keeps you kind of well-rounded, but it also makes you willing to learn. Um, that's my problem is that as I want to learn things, I just get afraid to learn things because I do have a, uh, I do have brain damage. So sometimes no, yeah. there, I do have a, a, a inability to learn sometimes, uh, which is frustrating. And I also have the ability to learn things greatly and then forget them in an instant. Uh, which John has worked with me actually, <laughs> and see, and I forgot who John was, uh, and I tried to keep it yeah. a secret. He did, um, and then he posted a video about it. And I'm like, what the hell, bro? <laughs> yeah. I've known you for like three weeks. How you forget me? Yeah, and and it it does. It's like like I, and like I said in your video, there's I the, when people say oh, I wish your channel would blow up, I'm like, when people's channels blow up, that usually means the real them comes out. And yeah, I, and I my, I always say to the 
a tone blue in the face. The real me is very boring. So I don't want to blow up. I it's like not boring. I like staying at the level we're at. And he's gradually. secretly Superman. Where he's, <laughs> his alter ego outside of video is amazing. On video, he has to be humanized and very like, hi, I'm Zeke. Welcome to the Venom vlog. But then outside, you see him doing backflips and everything. Like, <laughs> Oh, God. I, you just made my back hurt saying that. Um, but, uh, but you know, so I, I like that we've found our niches. Because it's like, yeah. like, for me, people go like, 600 videos on Venom? Are you insane? And I'm just like, well, I find the character interesting. And yeah. I didn't start the show off with that mindset. Yeah. I thought I would do like 10 videos and give up. Like, I give up on so many things. Even Neverland, I've given up on it three or four times. But I'm like, well, ultimately, I know I have to go back to it because yeah. it has to be done. But it's like, I have walked away from it. And I thought I was going to do that with Venom. But when I started learning about Eddie, I was like, wow, I see so much of myself in this guy. He's He's dealt with manic depression before. He's tried to take his own life. He's yeah. a, there's like a real human in that uh -huh. character. Yeah. Right. And, and I, I honestly didn't give the character. I love the character, but I didn't give him that much credit. So when I read that, I was like, okay, I'm in for the long haul with yeah. this one. Which is good because like, I've seen this multiple times in like, cause I'm a huge movie junkie uh -huh. and like, I like comics and stuff, but then you always get those one characters who are like super one dimensional and you're always like, I wish they would do more with it. Right. So like when I found your, when we, ah, yeah. When you told me you did a Venom channel and that you were almost at like 600, I was like, how? And then I go back and <laughs> I go back and start watching your videos and stuff. And I'm like, whoa, I had no idea there was so much depth into Eddie. Like, I thought he was just like the guy that Peter screwed out of a job. And right. then, bam, Venom. Yeah. And just the whole we thing because it's two brains. But right. like, no, there's like an actual person inside the suit. Yeah, I gotta say that's like that could be because I know the Parasite podcast we talk a little bit about Venom, but that's kind of neat to get your perspective because I do sometimes have people on here that tell me what they like about my show, and but I get that res most comic book people like I knew people that worked in the comic industry still do, and some that are just like adjacent to the yeah. comic industry, and when I tell them they're like how many episodes are you on like like a hundred or something like that, I'm like no, I just uploaded like episode six hundred, and they go a Venom. Yeah. Like, what do you talk about? That was that was <laughs> legit my thought process. When you're like, yeah, I'm going to do my YouTube name, Venom Vlog. And I'm like, oh, cool, you're talking about Venom? He's like, yeah. So what's, like, how many videos do you have and stuff? Oh, almost 600. I'm like, how? Right, like, like he's a two-dimensional <laughs> character. And then I go and watch your videos, and I'm like, oh, he's not two-dimensional. That's why. Uh, yeah, I don't think he is. I mean, no. I'm, I'm sure there could someone could probably give me a good argument why they think he is. But for me, I'm like, I saw something more yeah. as I learned more about him. Um, so yeah, it, it's nice. It's it's like, and there's he's been around 32 years now. So yeah. we have comics, we have cartoons, toys, movies. So it's like I have a ton of content to make. <laughs> I actually did never thought I could make it to 500 episodes, but now I'm like, I think we can easily do a thousand episodes. I think so too. Yeah. So that's like my goal now. Is I think I I promise, unless I, you know, get blowed up. Like, I, I plan to not end the show until I get to at least a yeah. thousand episodes. And if he doesn't, it's because he's hiding out in Asia somewhere. We will hunt him down. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know either. I, I guess I always wanted to go to Japan. Probably. <laughs> See? Asia. I knew it. Yeah. Nailed it. First try. <laughs> um, so, you, with your... So, that's, that's interesting to hear, though, that you watch the show and you're like, oh, wow, there is more to this guy. Yeah, because, like, legit, I honestly always thought, like... He was that, or when it's ever Flash Thompson, I'm like, sure, okay, so he's the bully. Uh -huh. Bet you his dad beats him in the background, but like that's pretty that's much true. all that it's gonna be. And then wow, he got the Venom suit, right? And then like I'm watching your videos, I'm like, yo, I didn't know that happened, or what? He had a sister, and now right. he's got a son. Right. What? And oh, I know yeah. I just mixed two characters, but yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, I was like, <laughs> I think you're talking about Venom, but yeah, um, I think no, I think Flash has a. Might have a sister too. Yeah, oh, he has a okay. sister. Yeah, he does. Um, he doesn't have a son though, oh, but, yeah. but Eddie does. Yeah, yeah. But I was like, yo, there's more to this than like I was led to believe because like my like knowing of Venom is mm -hmm. all from comics or what I heard. Like for the longest time, and you guys are probably gonna crucify me for this, but for the longest time, get it ready. <laughs> I thought Venom had bonded with Deadpool first before bonding with Peter Parker. And that's why the symbiote was crazy, because oh. someone had told me that. Well, that is a comic book. Yeah, um, yeah. We we talked about it on the show. 
but uh, but I haven't found it yet. I've That's been why. I've been explained the way that was explained to me is that that is true for Deadpool continuity, uh, okay. and I guess Deadpool continuity is both actual continuity and not actual continuity. So it's kind of like a gray area. So mm -hmm. it's up to you to decide if you believe that or not. Gotcha. But um, yeah, that's what I was led to believe. Like hmm. the reason that the symbiote went crazy and hmm. wanted to stay bonded to Peter Parker was because he was bonded to Deadpool. Hmm. And then he found a normal person and he was going to slowly take over his mind, like how Deadpool had corrupted him. Okay. And like that was my thought of Venom. And then I'm like, why does this sound so fake? Right. And then I look it up and I'm like, Yo, I have yet to find anything where like Deadpool bonds with Venom with it happened. Oh yeah, Venom first. Yeah, it's called um uh, Deadpool Back in Black. Mm -hmm. um, See now I gotta go watch it. Yeah, we did that one, and then there also we covered Venom First Host, which actually goes back to even before Deadpool, and uh, and there's a Kree soldier that bonds with the symbiote before it even ends up on Battle World, which is where Peter Parker found it. Yeah. Yeah. So they're so they're they've actually gone and retconned the Deadpool thing now oh, too. Okay. Um so yeah there's there's a lot. They they keep pulling back pull, you know peeling back layers. Cool. Because um, yeah, because after that, yeah, after the Deadpool thing, someone told me, oh he got this he originally gets this because my first thing, yeah, he got it from uh J. Jonah Jamerson's son. Because it came oh, from space. The cartoon. Yeah, yeah, literally the cartoon. Yeah. It came from space. That's how he got it. Mm -hmm. He had it for like two episodes, and then it went to Eddie Brock. Right. Because he screwed Eddie Brock out of a job, but Eddie Brock kind of deserved it. But then, like, right. um, watching, then like someone was like, "No, he actually gets it in Battle World. He goes to a machine and asks for a new suit, and that's what gives it to him." And I'm like, "No," -uh. and then I googled it, and yep, first appearance, <laughs> Battle World, and I was like. Why do I not know these? Right. And then watching your stuff, I feel like I can go toe to toe with anybody who says anything about Venom. Because I'm like, <laughs> I watch Zeke's channel. Let's go. I know this one. Someone asked me recently. They said, uh, they said, hey, has Marvel ever approached you of writing like a even like an eight page story or something? Because they're like, you have to know like the most about Venom now. Right. And I said, no. And then they're never gonna <laughs> like like. But what if they do? I did. It's never gonna happen. But what uh, if? <laughs> like a what if storyline. Disney's doing what if with Disney Plus. I'm just yeah. saying. Of of things that make billions of dollars. <laughs> this can make billions of dollars. <laughs> um, I I I don't know. I think I'm in a um I'm in uncharted waters. I don't I don't think if you went to anyone's YouTube channel or websites or anything, there is a website called the Venom site, and they've been covering Venom news since I think the third Spider Man movie in mm -hmm. 2007. So they've been around a lot longer than me. So I would figure if anyone got asked, it would probably be the people who run that website. Yeah. Um, but uh, I would say it would be an honor, yeah, to, to do something like that. But it's like, that's not what I set out to do. I did make the comment, though, one time is I like coffee table books and yeah. like um, making of things and behind the scenes things. I'm like, I would love to write a behind the scenes history of the two Venom movies. True. You know, and I go and I feel like I know enough to get started and maybe and you know people and then I can maybe interview people and stuff. And I was like, I, I would love to make a book about that uh, just to get on your coffee table. Right. Um, but and make sure it turns into a coffee table. <laughs> yes, I know. We're both Seinfeld <laughs> fans. Uh, yes. It's got it's a coffee table book that turns into a coffee table. Uh, yeah, that'd be good. Like little symbiote legs. Right. Come out. Yeah. Oh, my God. That'd be amazing. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. Yeah, so going back to, to you a little yeah. bit too, because um, uh, uh, what I like about these Parasite podcasts is that I just we just have conversations. It's like I don't want it to feel like an interview, but I do like people to know more about you and stuff. Gotcha. So is there is there something out there that you love? Obviously, you do it with tech, and that's like your Venom vlog is like you, every episode is about tech, and it's it's you looking to make things better and improve things. And you're even looking at like me and other YouTubers. Oh, hi, here's a suggestion how to improve that or that. Like that's always on your brain, but is yeah. there is there like a fictional character that you think you could probably do six hundred episodes on? Batman. 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 Yeah, I love Batman. All right, so you're gonna give me crap for this, but you know how your first movie you saw in movie theaters was um, crap. You just told me Purple this Rain. Purple Rain. Yeah. All right, so I know. So the year is ninety five. Okay. I am five years old, okay. and my sister is like. So there's an age gap between me and my siblings. Okay. So my sister is taking me to the movie theaters. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited because I always watched movies at home, but I didn't know there was an actual building where you went to watch movie theaters. Okay. This probably doesn't exist anymore, kids. I'm sorry if like I'm that whole theater still exists. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so we went and the lights go out and stuff. 
and then flashing words go across the screen, mm-hmm. and then down from the ceiling comes Batman, and it's Batman Forever. Oh, okay. That was my first like introduction to Batman ever, and I was like, oh my god, this guy is so cool. And I know like the movie isn't the best. Don't get me wrong. But, like, it's my, like, comfort food for movies okay. where I can always go back to this movie and watch it 5,000 times and, like, I still like it. Even though I know it's not the best. Yeah. But also, I didn't know the Tim Burton movies existed until I was sure. a teenager. Right, right. No, I'm not going to make fun of you for that. <laughs> I mean, Batman Forever is definitely my least favorite Batman yeah. movie. Um, but it's funny because people go, really? Not Batman and Robin? I invite you to listen to my commentary track. I saw. I listened movie. to it, and yeah. it was actually really good. And there was a bunch of stuff that I knew. Mm-hmm. And when like you're saying it, and I'm like, oh, such and such happens. And then you go, so I don't know if you guys know this or not, but and then I'm like, oh my god. Yeah, I know that movie inside and out. Um, that's my that's my fast food guilty yeah. pleasure. Yeah, we all have them. It's fine. I like that you like Batman. It's funny because um, I'm a big Superman guy. Yeah. Um, I, I love that character. I used to do a podcast just about Superman um, and on Patreon, but I canceled the Patreon after like four months, but I still have all 20 of those podcasts. So someone was telling me, they're like, you should put them on YouTube. You could. And I'm like, yeah, but I feel bad because people paid for them at one point, even though it's been over a year that's passed. Yeah. But um, but I might do a YouTube membership at one point too. So maybe I'll just throw them behind that maybe. paywall. Or you could always put them on like Spotify or something. I thought about that too. So, like a little spin off what it, one shot. Yeah. Of your Superman. Yeah, I could, I could. Well, but you know how like so well, the reason I bring that up is because you know how people fight over their favorite version of Superman. Yeah, like it's like oh Batman and all this. Stuff. Yeah, but yeah. it's more Superman. Like I True. mean, the only thing people argue about with Batman is whether he kills or not. But with Superman, it's like everything. Every little detail is like explored to the sure. ninth degree. And uh, and I'm kind of like, oh, like, man, why are we fighting over all this? I'm that way with Batman. Like, Batman is the guy who I only like one version of Batman. Which is? Which is like like a, a Batman that is can learn empathy like and compassion. So, like, uh, they did it in some episodes of the animated series where, like, ho- homeless people went missing. Oh, I love that yeah. episode. And so he, like, Bruce put himself in that situation, yeah. pretend that he was homeless. And then they beat him over the head. With yeah, he gets amnesia. Gun. Yeah. But but he, but he at the end, he, he not only saves all those homeless people that were being used as, like, labor, but he gave them jobs at Wayne Tech. Mm-hmm. Um, that is a Batman that has compassion. Yeah. Like, someone who doesn't want to punch Clayface, but wants to cure Matt Hagen of his virus. You know, um... But I think a lot of people just like the also, version of him that lo- that knows everything yeah. and can break everyone's neck. No. And I'm like, yeah, but I don't like the guy who's perfect. I like the guy who learns that uh, that there's another way. Like Batman and Robin, that's the one of the things I like about that movie yeah. is, is he's a dick. Uh, he's like a real dick as far as a partner to, ba- to Robin. And then Robin calls him out on it. Yeah, and so multiple he, times. Yeah, so he goes to Alfred and goes, am I like a dick? And, and yeah, and Alfred goes, yeah, yeah, yeah you're a dick. <laughs> <laughs> but then he, at the end, he embraces like teamwork. Yeah, and I like that. Also, in um the animated movie Sub Zero. Yeah, that's he, a good one. Um, he the whole time he's out here trying to help Freeze save right. Nora. Right. Because that's all that Freeze cares about. Sure. Is like fixing Nora and stuff. Sure. And like we see in the cartoon, he got screwed over by his boss. Mm-hmm. He almost lost his wife twice. Right. Like all this crazy stuff. So once Batman realizes, okay, so it's not Freeze's fault. It's this guy's fault right. because he turned, he made him go this way. Right. And then that was one of the things that I liked about um, the comic, not the comic, but like Sub-Zero is like, sure. he has empathy for Freeze like halfway through because he starts to realize it's not his fault. Right, Freeze is not in his situation because of Freeze. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's what I like about that version of Batman too. Is that it's like he, <laughs> Echo. <laughs> uh, but but I like that version of Batman too because he's he. That's what he's he's looking. He's a detective, right? Yeah. So detectives solve crimes and solve cases. So to me, if he looks at Mister Freeze as a case, yeah. To solve the case of Mister Freeze, you save Nora. Mm-hmm. If you save Nora, you probably don't have a Mister Freeze anymore. And then it's one less headache Batman has. Yeah. So granted, the comics can never do that. Or the, or if they bring Nora back, she becomes like an evil freeze. Like they did that one time, which was really dumb. Um, that was. But it's like, if you do that, if you saw, if Batman actually solves things in the comics, his villains go away. And the, the but best... But then 
Here's the thing, though. Yeah. Because uh, not all of Batman villains yeah. exist because of outside situations. That's true. Most of them exist because Batman has created them. Oh, right. So, like, Joker well, sometimes, only, yeah. Yeah, because, like, Joker only exists for Batman. Sure. Because the Dark Knight um, comic and the animated movie. Right. Joker's in an asylum, asylum, like, completely peaceful and fine and stuff. Sure. Because there is no Batman. He doesn't come out of his retirement until he finds out Batman is back on the streets fighting people. Sure, I mean, there there is that. Um, but then there's also guys like Mad Hatter who are not there because of Batman. Yeah. They're there because they're they're creepy guys who like young women and they and they dress up as uh, fictional characters yeah. and they're weirdos. And they, they are so much to the point where they create a device that gives them control over your mind. So like Same thing with Pig. Yeah, Professor Pig is yeah. like that. Yeah. So there are some villains that are just they're gonna be there no matter what. And mm -hmm. so you need a Batman there. Then there are some villains that Batman inadvertently created in some way. Yeah. And then there's the other ones that um like if, if you like Mr. Freeze. The, yeah, if you fix the problem, they go away. They go away. So that's uh, so I agree with you. Like it's like, okay, maybe we won't get Mr. Freeze stories anymore, or you gotta come up with a clever way to bring them back. Mm -hmm. Um, but you we talk about hamster wheels. Yeah. Yeah, and like Venom wheel I like Venom and why we talk about him on the show is because He's one of those characters that broke free from his hamster wheel. He is. Yeah, he's constantly new things are happening to him mm -hmm. um, that that never ha like that that are different from before. Yeah, because um, yeah. that's also like so because of you, yeah. I've gotten more into like animated Spider-Man. Yeah. Because there's a bunch of like Spider-Man cartoons that I didn't grow up watching. I remember the one from the '90s mm -hmm. and Spider-Man 2099 because that literally came right after. Oh, Unlimited, Spider-Man Unlimited. Is that the one with 99? There's no 2099 Spider-Man. I don't know. All I know is he wears the, like, bluer... Yeah, that's a... The red and the, oh, yeah. Okay. he's fighting Carnage and Venom in the other universe? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Him. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah, because it was, like, 90 Spider-Man cartoon, yeah. that, that Spider-Man cartoon, then nothing Spider-Man till like, 2000s. But by then, I was already like, ah, oh, I don't really like Spider-Man. Okay, yeah. But, yeah, but, like, those were the two that I grew up with. So now I'm going back, and because they're all on Disney+. Plus. Okay. I'm watching, like, older ones, and, like, in almost every iteration, doesn't wear, matter who wears the symbiote. Right now, I'm watching one where Harry is yeah, the original okay. Venom. Uh-huh. Ultimate well, Spider-Man. Yeah, so no matter what variation, like, in the TV show, Venom just hates Spider-Man and is constantly trying to kill Spider-Man. Right. And yet, like, I go and watch your stuff, and, like, I'm seeing... Oh, Venom doesn't even care about Spider-Man anymore. No. What? Venom's an Avenger? When did this right. happen? Right. Yeah, like... Yeah. It's, and it's... I wish they would explore those, but I get, like, Venom is Spider-Man's villain, so, like... Well, hopefully now that he's not, now that they've seen him stand alone in his own movie, I'm hoping Sony makes a Venom cartoon. Hopefully. And then, then you can have the character stand on his own and, and evolve, yeah. you know, um, past just being a bad guy to Spider- or evil right. Spider-Man. Um, so I hope that does happen. And, um... Same with, uh, you know, like like getting out of the hamster wheel, that also made me look at my own life. And that was one of the reasons why I decided to move was because I was like, you know, every year is the same out here in California. I barely survive. I barely pay my bills. Um, my health is declining. I have a good support system, but, but I, I'm tired of them seeing me, you know, yo-yo through this yeah. existence. And I said, so why don't I move? Like, why don't I break free from my hamster wheel? Yeah. And actually try something different. Yep. And even though I moved back to a city that I lived in before, I have no memories of living here. So it is kind of like a new thing to me. It is. And I came here with two friends. And now I have, you know, like a dozen, which is yeah. really nice. Um, so so I would say... Plus you caught a disease that you can only catch in water. And you caught it from breathing our air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got a, a hypothermia from just existing in Florida. Yeah, because yeah. we have too much water in our air. Is that what it is? Yeah, like literally. So I went to New York. Oh. I did a one-day trip yeah. to New York. So we went, and I was in New York all day and stuff. The plane comes back, and we land in Florida. Uh -huh. Second I step out of the airport, I feel all the humidity in the air. And I'm really? like, oh, my God. Yeah, because like I'm in New York, and like the atmosphere is different, sure. and like the air is different. Also, New York smells cleaner than Florida for some reason. I think really? it's the swamp waters. Could be but that. like I got it here. It could be Echo Sparks also. Uh, true, maybe. But yeah, I got hit back and I'm like, oh my god, I can feel the hum I can feel the water in the air. I'm like oh, this man. is so gross. It was like walking in soup. Ooh, wow. Yeah. Interesting. So yeah. like that's literally why you probably got sick because you weren't used to our <laughs> oxygen. Could be. We're half yeah. we're half Atlanteans over here. No kidding. Well you're closer to it. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Yeah, we're going to be like Waterworld, so Gil's behind our ears. <laughs> Waterworld? I hope we're nothing like Waterworld. <laughs> that was a terrible movie. I mean, if the glaciers keep going down. Sure. All right. Fair yeah. enough. Yeah. Um, Echo, you know how to swim? We're both, Echo, both Echo and I are deathly afraid of water. <laughs> So, uh, so next Venom blog, we're going to be at the beach, guys. We're going to be at the pool. At the beach yeah. with sharks and everything. Sharks I'm not afraid of. Just the water they swim in seems terrifying to me. I mean, into the unknown, right? Uh, I, I know what's <laughs> in the ocean, kind of. I know enough. We only know like 10% of the ocean. That's that's more than enough for me to not want to go in it. Um, well, okay, so, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say, so, yeah. So back to being in the hamster wheel and stuff. Oh, yeah. So you got out of California yeah. and came here. I came here. But uh, but what I... So Batman is one of those characters like Superman, I feel like a lot of times is in a hamster wheel. Um, yeah. But, but the last few years when they gave him a kid and he has a family, now this is a, hopefully a new hamster wheel because I like him as a dad. Yeah. Batman, I like as a dad. Oh, I love that. I, I really dad. like Damien. Same. Um, and he added so much to Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson's relationship even, mm -hmm. too. Um, so as a Batman fan, I guess I would just like to get your final thoughts on your take on Batman nowadays compared to where he was. Like, do you see him as someone who, even though it took 80 years, is a, is very different and evolved than where he started out? So from where he started out, yes. Yeah. As different and stuff, not sure. really, just because... No matter what storyline you're doing, Batman has a kid, Batman doesn't have a kid, mm -hmm. Batman is the Joker, Batman is <laughs> such and such. Like, I feel like they always find a way to, like, okay, so Batman's going on this good line. Mm -hmm. Oh, but we can't have Batman be good. Bam, tragedy. Right. Like, Batman's a father. Oh, my God, he's doing so good with his, father, with his son. Right. He's got an awesome relationship with his team. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is so nice. Bam, kill Damien. Yeah. Oh man, they're outraged because we killed Damien. Bam, fight Dark Side to bring Damien back. Right. Like I always feel like no matter what, Batman always has to be put back into tragedy. There's just sure. I wish like there was a storyline where like where Superman where things actually went good for Batman for a while and he was okay. See, it's hard because like I think the only place to do that is either in a one or two random cartoon episodes like we mm -hmm. discussed earlier or in a movie like Dark Knight Rises, which I would argue has a happy ending for Batman. Yeah. But um, then you also get those people who say, was it really a happy ending or just <laughs> Alfred's fever dream? Well, oh yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, but I think those are people who just read too much into stuff. Like, Because like, the problem I've noticed doing the Venom vlog is oftentimes fandoms come up with the most ridiculous theories mm -hmm. and they don't just accept the simple thing in front of them. True. They're just like, oh, it can't be the simple thing. Life's more complicated than that. It's like, but a lot of times it isn't, and storytelling isn't. Yeah. A lot of times storytelling is just a simple thing. And I know Chris Nolan is a, a smart guy and a smart filmmaker, and people want to read more into it. But to me, it's the simple thing is that Alfred gets to have a happy ending, too. Because, because he knows. Because he knows now Bruce is going to go live a life. Yeah. And that's what he wanted for Bruce. And that's what he promised his Bruce's parents he would get, you know, get Bruce, too, at one point. Even Bruce promises it. Right. In so, the second movie, he promises, like... I'm just going to do this last thing. Right. Beat the Joker. Right. And then me and Rachel will go off and live our happy lives. Sure. Bam, they kill Rachel. But, uh, yeah. Tragedy. Right. But I think that that's the thing, though, is like, but it's a tragedy, but it's also like the tragedy was she was a young woman who had a good future in Gotham with a guy she loved, which mm -hmm. was Harvey Dent. Um, and she wasn't going to choose Bruce anyway. Yeah. Um, so there's that level, too, where she died, but she wasn't really going to have Bruce. Bruce wasn't going to be with her. Mm -hmm. Um but I'll uh, never know that because Alfred burned the letter. Sure. Well, but then he it, it confessed it to Bruce, you know. Sure. Um, but I do like that arc for Bruce. And that's the thing is a lot of times people who are just fans and ingest stuff, they're like, oh, what would be a cool twist as opposed to what's good for the character? And the best thing for those characters is Alfred getting a happy ending and Bruce getting a happy ending because they earned it because yeah. of the crap they go through in those three movies. So to me, that's why that's that's not even debatable. Like it's the happy ending is the happy yeah. ending, but it's like it. But then Gotham's still protected because you know Blake will now become, um, you know, or I guess his real name is Robin, but he'll Which become. Was the it, it was the weirdest ever. Yeah, uh, but uh, but him being whatever Blake, whatever his name was, like that's fine. Like yeah. he he's the new Batman, and it's like all right, perfect. Think he'll have the red phone. Yeah, right. Maybe. I mean, it was in the mansion. It was yeah, um, with the statue and everything too. That was. The, <laughs> I saw that and I was like, 
No way. Well, and then... the, but the mansion becomes an orphanage at the end of that movie. Oh, it does. And he just lives in the cave underneath it, um, which is cool too. Yeah. Um, but I, I do like that because I think I too like stories like the other day me and my friend Alex watched Mystery of the Batwoman. Oh, I saw and, that. And that actually has kind of a happy ending yeah. for Bruce, um, where he doesn't like it doesn't end in a tragedy or no tragedy thing happens in yeah. it really. Um, and I'm like, yeah, those are rare, but it's but when when you do it, people don't like it. They don't because no. Batwoman isn't like you ask people, have you seen it? And you're either going to get, yeah, it was okay. Or no, I didn't even know this movie existed. Right. But now ask anybody, have you seen Masks of the Phantasm? Right. Everybody's seen that movie. Right. And what happens? Super it's tragic. all tragic <laughs> right. for Batman. No Why can't ending. Batman have a happy ending? Just <laughs> one time. Why right. does Superman get it all? <laughs> he, he gets a glimpse at the end where he sees the pendant and it's like, oh, Andrea is still out there. And it's like, or she could have put that in there a week ago, mm -hmm. like, or whatever, you know, but it's like, uh, but even still, it's like, yeah, that's the only happiness. And that's not real happiness. Like, it's, it's, it's like, yeah. And um, then even when they go to, um, in the future and Terry McGinnis is becoming yeah. Batman, they, um, they use her. Huh? Yeah. She's like yeah. the assassin. She was supposed to kill his parents. Right. But instead of doing it, she felt bad because she had the memory of Bruce Wayne losing his parents right. so young. So right. she doesn't do it. Right. But either way, his dad gets killed, and bam, he's right. forced to become it was Batman. Now. Destiny anyway. But yeah. but I like that for Andrea's arc, she couldn't do it. Yeah. Because she probably would be like, oh, I just got to kill a couple people. Fine, I do that anyway. And then and she, she realizes she's what's like, what's going on. Right. She's like, kids I, coming out of movie right. theater with his parents. Right. She's like, I can't do it. Yeah. I can't. I can't cause another Bruce Wayne. And uh, that's why I love that. But those Same. are good. So that's my thing. Is like that's why Neverland's such a pain in the ass to write. Is because it's it's not about pacing and structure for me. I think one thing people will probably critique me on when they read the books is, oh, it's not. Some scenes feel jumbled or they're not paced well. Because the thing I focus the most on is character. Mm -hmm. I really want things that happen to Pete, the characters feel like it's earned to the character not one-sided characters it, right i guess and, and it's hard because there's a lot of characters in there that i just can't relate to yeah like i know i can't relate to anything tiger lily is like but then i i kind of put a twist on her that made me really engage in the character mm -hmm. um and i basically what i looked at what i wrote and i was like oh this this is kind of a tragedy to her and yeah. i go so she's kind of like john wick yeah, and then I'm like Tiger Lily as John Wick, and I'm like, ben, now I can write this character, your story. right? And I'm like, so so again, it's like finding the character, and then that helps the rest yeah. fall into place, right? Um, but it's hard because in comic books they constantly have to reset things. Yeah, um, which kind of sucks. It does suck, but uh, but hopefully, I don't know if you read. I haven't read any of the new Batman stuff where Not there's yet. like a future Batman called Next Batman or something. Like, oh, um, I don't know any of it. So, I saw it. Yeah. And I'm like, uh, about it. Yeah. Because, like, don't get me wrong. Yeah. Like, it's cool you're doing another Batman storyline, but you've already set up, like, where does this fit into the timeline now? Because, one, sure. Terry McGinn, we all know Terry McGinnis or Damian Wayne is going to be Batman, depending sure. on what Which timeline. Right. But, yeah, it all depends on what Damian Wayne decides. If he right. goes, rejoins the League of Shadows, uh, Tim Drake. Becomes not Tim Drake. Uh, um, Terry McGinnis, Terry McGinnis yeah. becomes Batman. Right. If uh, Damian Wayne becomes Batman, yeah, it's a bad apocalypse that right. goes on. Right. Right. So like those are the two timelines. So now where does this guy fall in? Right. Is he in that weird spot right after Damian but before Terry or like sure is he after Terry but then Bruce Wayne's still alive like how and he's he... younger? Yeah. yeah. So like where does this guy fall in? <laughs> And that's what kind of like upsets me with it because maybe if I read it, I'll like it. But sure, just the storyline, I'm like, no. Nah. Because here's the thing about so Batman Beyond is my favorite. I love Batman Beyond. Same. I have the box set out in the living room. I saw. Yeah, I saw, I saw you look at it. <laughs> um, and the thing about that is, even though it's a cartoon, it's so it made such an impact that um, that it has transcended. So now people like you and even myself who know that it's a different timeline because yeah. the animated universe. But I still, in my mind, go, no, Batman in the future is Terry McGinnis. And then maybe he falls at some point and Bruce has to take up the mantle as the Dark Knight returns. But then Terry's going to get it back. Yeah. You know, like, so to me, Terry is future Batman. Yeah. Um, well, but yeah, like, that's right. my thing, too. Terry's Even though he's from another Batman. universe. Yeah. It doesn't Terry, matter. Terry's future Batman. Uh, right. Based off what Damien decides. Sure. Right, yeah. right, right. Because, like, I read the, like, 
um, future storyline where Damien becomes Batman. Yeah. And it's straight up an apocalypse storyline yeah. where he just, like, like, murdering everybody. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, Gotham's, like, a desert land. Well, he, and and he's, he's, like, the, the embody, like, the devil's in him. Yeah. Yeah, he's, like, the the, the host of the devil. Yeah, because he yeah. never learned how to control his anger. Right. Right. Yeah. But then there's the storyline where, um, I don't know if you read this, but in Terry McGinnis, mm. um, the League of Assassins comes mm-hmm. back right. and he has no idea why. Right. And then all of a sudden you see this giant red bat. Okay. And I'm like, oh my God, please be him. Please be him. Right. And then the bat lands and on top of him is Damien Wynn, yeah. the new head of the dragon. And right. I'm like, thank God it was him. <laughs> uh, first of all, you never have to ask me if I've read a book by Dan Jurgen because the answer is always yes. I don't know, man, because sometimes <laughs> Dan, you're very critical on your on your comic book. Reading. I know I am, yeah. but Dan Jurgens is like... He's he could write any book he wants. I'll be there. Okay, good um, to know. So yeah, so yeah. I read it. And I was like, I saw the bat, and I'm like, please be Damien, please be Damien, please be Damien. That was literally my thought as I'm nice. like flipping pages. I'm like, and it was, success. it was, yeah. I was so happy. I was like, yeah. <laughs> and then they go back and explain how like he decided to leave Batman, join the league, yeah, and became the new head of the demon. And yeah, I was like this makes so much sense for me. It's funny because now I'm this episode I didn't know was going to turn into a Batman conversation, <laughs> and I wish I had the couch over on that wall where you True. could see more DC stuff. Um, but that's okay. I mean, we got that's DC fine. figures on either side of us yeah. too. Um, but uh, so, any last words though? Because I, I I know I could talk to you all day. Um, I mean, I'm totally fine if you want to talk all day. <laughs> I know, but um, but uh, for my viewers who are used to just one hour pod, you know, podcast episodes, um, you know. Where do you go from here as a content creator? What is something you would... Because I, I know you you have me on as your yeah. first guest of you wanting to interview other YouTubers. Yes. Um, and that's really neat. And there's a couple other YouTubers I know about here in Orlando. So And I know they like to collab. So if I can find that information, I'll try to get it to you. Yeah, and exactly. I'm sure you have some people you want to do for, you know, go after too. Yeah. Um, but besides that, like, what is where do you hope you are this time next year with your content? So this time next year with my content, I hope to be... A more established YouTuber where like either a I can do this full time so I don't have to worry about like I'll post this video today and then you guys won't get another video till like a month later because it does take me so long to sure. edit videos and stuff yeah so I hope either I get to do this full time or I'm in a better spot where I can do a little bit of both work and constantly keep my YouTube going mm-hmm. and then also like with um, filmmaking and editing and stuff I would love to be like part of a production of some kind, okay. even if it's like a ten-second commercial. I would love to work in that that field. Yeah. Okay, that's pretty good. Those are yeah. good goals. Yeah. And there's, I mean, I know once COVID clears up, there will probably be more more openings for for the like the production stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So that's all I got to hope on for, and we'll see where things go. What about you? Where do you want to be in a year from now with Venom Blog and stuff? Oh, man. Well, I hope the movie's out. <laughs> I hope so, too. Because in a year, I hope it comes out. Because that's been the hardest thing on this channel was uh, losing it in October, which I was like, okay, I can I can fill a few months yeah. if it comes out, if it actually comes out in June. I have enough content to get me to June. It's if it gets pushed back from June. If it ends up in 2022, mm-hmm. that will really hurt. the. I think the momentum the channel has built, because um, for a while there, I was going up in subscribers. Mm-hmm. And now I've definitely leveled off. And people can sit there and say, oh, it's algorithm this or it's that. But really what it is is it's it's hype. You know, the, it, the movie hype dies yeah. the longer it takes to come out. And if they if Sony ends up making that decision to release it in 2022, um, like if they push it two or three months, we'll probably be okay. Yeah. But if they push it six months or a year, that'll be hard. Because yeah. then I'll have to basically this entire season will be me not talking about the movie. And because because we still haven't got a trailer for it, we yeah. haven't seen. We've only seen one official image of Woody Harrelson and one of Tom, um, and not in not in costume or anything sure. like, like just as the characters. Um, but on the bright side, Tom did start posting on his Instagram again. Yes, right. and there's from the last news I saw that you gave, they were scoring it. Yes. Well, that was a couple of news back. Sure. You also saw the weird, but they also arm thing. Yeah, well, that was from like a year ago, yeah. but uh, but they also um they scored Morbius back in like October of last year, and that movie's not coming out till January of next year. Ooh. So so the scoring I thought was a good sign too. Yeah. But I'm like, well, that's just a good sign that they're nearing completion of it. But yeah. they could just but also it could just be like Morbius is a uh, project because even um, sure, what's his name, 
Jared Leto's not Jared even Leto's into it. Jared Leto's not. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't care. Yeah. Like, I can see that Sony doesn't care because I remember when they first started talking about it, mm-hmm. there was so much hype, and then they all just got to that point where, like, oh, we don't care about this movie no more. But Venom has a following, and they've had right. one movie already. Right. So Out of the two, it's the more important yeah. one to focus on. Right. So that's why I'm thinking there's a little chance of it going into next year. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but so I hope for my channel that at least... If the movie hasn't come out, that we're very close to it coming out, and we've at least gotten a few trailers, yeah. So that way, there's stuff to talk about. Because right sure. now, I'm like combing through IMDb, like looking like, oh, <laughs> someone is a PA on this movie. Let's make a video <laughs> on PAs. Like it's like it's getting really tough. And I will watch that. <laughs> I know you will. I know you will. Um, yeah. But uh, but I hope in a year from now, like I hope my my quality continues to improve because it will. Cause... Yes, because I have f- yeah. friends who won't let it. Not we happen. won't. Um, yeah, you and 2020, Andrew. Me and Andrew, 2022, <laughs> like 4K everything. Yes. Um, but You know uh, what? Zeke's going to be in your living room in 2022. Oh, geez. Yeah. Get ready. Um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I but I, I think that's my thing is that I like being, I like looking at my content as like a fast food type thing. It's like, oh, I just like getting it out there. Yeah. Like to me, I'm just like, I'm like a conveyor belt. I'm just like, here's, here, you know, sometimes I take two, three weeks to make a video and sometimes I just pump out like 10 in a week. Yeah, and it's like I like which doing is hard it. to catch up on because like right, I'll be I'll be watching your video <laughs> and halfway through your video I get a notification. Better vlog release the video. Then I'm like, all right, cool. So after this one, I'll watch that one. At the end of the video, Venom vlog release another <laughs> video or Seek and Destroy has released a video. And I'm like, I can't, I can't. Yeah, with, <laughs> with two channels and Resident Evil videos on the other channel now, it's 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 tough. Yeah. But but I'm trying, and that's one feedback I get a lot that people say is like, hey. I like your content, but I do fall behind easily when you post a lot. Yeah. But then I have the people who like if I don't post two days in a row, they go, "Where's the next video?" So it's like it's a hard thing to juggle. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I'm gonna lean more towards this is my side job. Mm-hmm. I, I never want this to be my full time job. I don't want to be a full time YouTuber. I like working out in the real <laughs> world. Um, but uh, but I do like the first feedback, which is. Hey man, if you, I do like to apologize for it. Like, hey guys, I know I said I'd make a video today. Yeah. I can't for this reason. Um, and most people are cool. They're like, yeah, fine, dude. Because um, then I put the video like I put up today, where it's like the reading of the book. Yeah. And uh, which and, was very good. And people, yeah, people were like, make more stuff like this. And I'm like, well, this took like two weeks to make. So if you <laughs> if you're cool with waiting two weeks, I'll do more of these. Yeah. Yeah. There's always like that happy medium though. Sure. Like, where you like, do some of both. That's what yeah, I Yeah, like you could always upload like one or two videos mm-hmm. while working on a bigger video in the background. Sure. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um awesome. Well good. Hopefully in a year from now we'll you will I'm sure you'll see more of us between now and then. Yes. But we'll do another video like this a year from now and we'll we'll see if what we did. Right. Yeah, we'll Hopefully. do a reaction to this <laughs> and go like, oh we were way off. Right? Yeah. Zeke's not in your living room. Yes. <laughs> And my, somehow my video quality got worse, right? Even with new tech. 720p? What is that? Well, 140. Oh, God, I remember 140. <laughs> Two pixels per video? <laughs> What's happening? Um, awesome. Well, John, thanks for not only taking time out of your day to film something of me on your channel, yeah. but thanks for doing this Parasite podcast with me on my channel. Thank you for being on my channel. Sure, and dude. thank you for having me. Yeah. This was awesome. Definitely, we're going to do this more. Absolutely. And yeah, hopefully once COVID comes down, we'll be like doing outside videos. We do live in Orlando, and we have the big giants in our backyard, such sure. as Universal and Disney. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We, who what? knows? Venom from Disney. Oh, we got to do the Spider-Man ride at Universal together. Ooh. That's what we got to do. Right? Yeah, because that's something I haven't done on this channel, and Scream is on that ride. The, the female is. symbiote. Oh, my God. Yeah. So, so we got to do that. So quick backstory. Okay. So um, a couple of months ago, Universal did this thing where you buy the one-day ticket. And you get another day free, right? No. So it turns into, like, an annual pass. Ooh. So I bought it, and it was, like, six months. Mm. So me and my girlfriend got to go, like, mm. multiple times. And then I was like... Yo, the one thing I want to do is do this right. I'm like, I know it sucks because it's so, like, old and stuff. Right. So, I want to do it. I got on. They upgraded the whole, the whole thing. whole thing. That's what I heard. And I saw it. And I was like, oh, my God. There's even, like, an uh, endgame reference in the... Uh, yeah. In okay. the no grinder. spoilers. No spoilers. No, no spoilers. Right. But there's an endgame reference. Whoa. And then, like, the graphics look amazing and stuff. And I was like, yo, it did not look like this, like, 10 years ago. Yeah. Um, awesome. So that even more incentive. Yes. So, so that, we'll that'll definitely be a, we'll do go. that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and yes, and we will just like before this video, we will get our COVID tests to know that we can record. Yes. And then, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then uh, we'll you know continue to do that. But obviously, 
Um, and actually, for work, both of us have to do check-ins all the time. Like yeah, I get my constantly. Ten- yeah, all the time. Because uh, when I worked at Lego, I was like, oh wow, they're very thorough here. And, yeah, super yeah. thorough. Like yeah, even if your temperature is one percent high. Yeah, not yeah. low for some reason because sure. like they kept asking you to come in. Right. But one temperature high, they're like, you need to go get checked. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, if you have hypothermia and it if doesn't you can work, count. they can you can yeah. still go in. You could be yeah. like not eighty-nine degrees, and they're like. You can make it. You got this. Yeah. You're uh, freezing on the inside, <laughs> asking them to raise the heater, and they're like, it's 92 degrees like, in the shade. Yeah. Why do you want the heater? You're good. You're good. Yeah. Um, awesome. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, we'll do more of this. Yeah, Definitely. the ride we got to do, though. Yes, we will. Awesome. Um, we'll do all the cool stuff. Yes, we will. Yeah. All right. And uh, all of his links, like I said, I'm going to put down below to his YouTube channel and his uh, Instagram. And are you on Twitter, too? Uh, or Facebook? So I'm on Facebook. Uh-huh. And then I'm also on Twitter, but I'm not active on Twitter just because, like, I don't understand sure. how it works. Yeah. I, I'm not a fan of Twitter. Yeah. Really. Um, but I'll put all those links down below <laughs> to the things you are active on. Oh, okay. And that way you guys can go check them out. But, you know, please uh, subscribe to his channel and uh, make sure you keep up uh, with his his stuff. His uh, My video of his is going to be going up soon, I'm sure. Hopefully. And uh, <laughs> Yeah. And uh, and I'll get this up as soon as I can as well. Sounds and uh, good. And I appreciate your time, man, and we'll definitely do more of this in the future. Yes, we definitely will. Awesome. All right, guys. Peace. Have thank, a good one. Thank you guys so much. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And we'll see you in the future. Peace. Peace.